Hi all, Mrs. Barker here. I wanted to start my teacher feature by introducing you to my bird, Coco. Um, she's very cuddly, as you can see, and loves pets um, a lot. <laughs> and I wanted to also share the wall of paintings that I have done. Um, I used to actually be an art teacher. Um, and a lot of them, as you could probably tell, are all ocean animals. Um, and these were actually part of my wedding, which was really cool. Um, for the rest of my teacher feature, I also wanted to share some fly labs that I've been a part of. Um, so you probably won't see me on the screen, but just some of the things that I did in the lab. Um, I just wanted to share that with you all. You probably only think of flies as annoying pests, but they can actually be quite useful in science. Flies are surprisingly similar to humans due to their body structure and genetics. During this lab, I worked with thousands of individual flies, each of which contributed to nervous system and genetic research. So why does a lab need all these flies? Each vial holds a population of flies with genetically manipulated mutations that are being studied. This lab is specifically looking at how genes and fly behaviors are linked through a variety of experiments. The tools used in this fly lab include lots of different kinds of microscopes, also carbon dioxide gas and tools to use to put the flies to sleep so that it's easier to work with them. Many other bottles were also all over the place with all sorts of different chemicals. Computers are also super important tools that are used to analyze images and videos of flies. What surprised me the most was this mug full of paintbrushes and feathers. They're actually important tools in this fly lab because they're used to move flies around without harming them. So what happens in this fly lab? There are many different experiments happening all at once that are investigating everything from genetics to behaviors to sleep. I had the opportunity to learn how to dissect a fly brain so that it could be studied under a high-powered microscope that uses lasers to light up different proteins in the fly brain. I used CO2 gas to start to anesthetize or put the flies to sleep. I then placed them in troughs full of ethanol to make sure they were no longer alive when I was dissecting their brains. I then prepared the dissection tray with a solution that keeps the brains intact after they are dissected. Using tweezers with needle-like tips, I carefully placed a fly in the solution to be pinned down. I then pierced the hair-like pins into the fly's abdomen to keep them in place. The arrow is pointing to the pin in this picture. I then carefully removed the head and slowly removed the eye lenses and extra tissue around the brain. Think of it like peeling a microscopic orange. The other scientists in the lab use this technique to dissect fly brains, which they then study under very precise microscopes. The red image in is part of the fly brain being studied in the lab. I was also involved in another experiment that looked at fly courting behavior in relation to the amount of sleep they got. The short sleepers and the long sleeper flies ate especially dyed food so they could be distinguished from each other when they were filmed. The two male flies are placed in compartments with one female fly and their behavior is recorded for 20 minutes. They were kept in special refrigerators that were set at stable temperatures during this time. As the flies waited their 20 minutes, they were recorded with cameras in those refrigerators to track their behavior. After the time was up, the recordings are uploaded to a computer and studied to see if the flies showed any courting behaviors. The specific behavior we were looking for was when a male fly extended one of its wings. When experimenting with flies, it is important to be able to identify virgin flies to do accurate genetic crosses. It is fairly simple using a light microscope to distinguish the two. The female virgin flies tend to be larger and have no dark external markings. The male virgins are generally smaller and have dark external reproductive organs. I want to thank Cal State East Bay and the STAR program for this experience. 